Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I am debuting a brand new series on this channel called Battle Spot Trouble. What this series is, it's basically like Road to Rank, but I'm going to be doing Battle Spot Doubles, and the reason why I want to keep it separate from Road to Rank right now is because I still want to do some Road to Rank in the upcoming two months or so, since we still have two months of VGC 17 left, but I want to also do a Battle Spot mini series on this channel, because first of all, I think it's really refreshing and exciting new content, and second of all, with VGC 18 rules announced, this format is basically what will resemble VGC 18. Obviously, there are some key things that we don't know about VGC 18 yet, like what legendaries are going to be in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and what tutor moves will be allowed, but, you know, if there is any way and any time you want to try to practice VGC 18 right now, like, this is as close as we get until Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon actually come out. And I feel like this will kind of revitalize my interest right now in uh, the game and making content as well, just because, as you may have heard from other videos previously, like, VGC 17 is just kind of boring, I think, for to play and to watch, really, at this point, since we've had it for a while. Uh, and the reason why I've been gone once again for the last couple of weeks is mainly just because of school and in real life and personal reasons. Uh, nothing bad, just really focusing on, you know, doing well this semester and uh, just a bunch of other things. And so I think now, uh, you know, like previously I thought, oh, the first wave of exams is over. I'll finally have some more time. And then I ended up having like, I looked at my schedule and I'm like, oh, wait, that's actually not the case. I pretty much have an exam every week uh, for the semester just because my course load is pretty intensive this semester. And a lot of my classes have like three exams and then a final exam as well. And that's not including projects and extracurriculars and whatnot. Uh, but all of that's fine. I just really want to do well this semester. This is pretty much my most important semester. Uh, and after this one, like next semester is going to be so much more relaxed because I'll have fewer courses and it's going to be a lot less uh, it, you know, difficult. And so just to give you guys some insight, but I, I do want to start doing this series on a regular basis since we are hyping up or we're getting close to the hype of Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon and uh, VGC 18 is slowly creeping up on us. And so I still, you know, want to get an introduction to it personally for me, because I want to understand the format a little bit better and get some ideas before we actually get into it, but also for you guys to kind of see what the format might be like. So I've been rambling for a while now. Let's actually jump into things. If you guys enjoyed this series and you want to see more of it, please share support by leaving a like on the video and giving me any feedback, especially because this is the first episode. I do want to do this pretty regularly, especially because I think people will probably be more interested in this than VGC 17 Battle Spot or VGC 17 uh, Road to Ranked at this point. But I'll still do some Road to Ranked on the side. So yeah, let me know what, what you want to see. I'm going to be using a QR code team just because I haven't actually had time to build anything so far. Uh, so this should be interesting though, because we're going up against a hard trick room team immediately. So Mimikyu, Porygon, Snorlax, Gigalith, uh, the Camera Rubbed, and the Marowak. So I believe the Gardevoir has Trick Room as well, which could make this interesting. Um, it does, yeah. So I could potentially reverse Trick Room. But the issue is my opponent has Porygon and Mimikyu. Like, m my opponent's team is actually a VGC 17 team other than the Camerupt, which presumably is Mega Camerupt. I'm um, probably going to want to bring the... Bring the, bring the Tapu Fini here. I'm thinking of leading Gardevoir because Gardevoir is pretty good offensively, but I also want to just pressure shutting down Trick Room immediately. Um... Landers could be good because I have Intimidate. Uh, but the thing is, I'm, I'm tempted to lead with Feeny. Like, my opponent could try to go with Porygon and Mimikyu to kind of fake me out immediately. Um, well, I guess Landers might still be solid here. Hmm. This is tough. I do want Landers because my opponent's team is rather physically based. I definitely need Tapu Fini. Not the biggest fan of Zapdos here, especially with my opponent running a Marowak. Aegislash mm, is tempting. It's between Aegislash and Incineroar, really. Um, I believe this Incineroar is Assault Vest, so it really won't help me as much. I think I like Aegislash just because of the super effective damage that I get from it. So, we're gonna get into this. This is literally my very first game of Battle Spot Doubles, and my very first game with this team as well. This is a QR code team, so if you're interested, check it out. Linked in the description below as well. I'm gonna be making a, a video, hopefully this weekend. Uh, and I'll, like, hopefully I'll get to make it this weekend and then upload it by next week. And, uh, it's gonna be like an introduction to VGC 18 video. Uh, obviously we don't know what Ultra Sun, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon will hold yet, but, uh, you know, I'll link some resources where you guys can get started uh, just practicing Battle Spot Doubles to have some sense of what VGC 18 will look like. So there's Landorus, and there is the Gardevoir. His Mim Here's Mimikyu and Snorlax, which is very VGC 17-esque. All right, so we got some new friends here. My opponent's still running the same stuff as we've seen previously in the format. I'm going to trace the Gluttony here, so that doesn't really help me. Okay, uh, so I'm banded. Now, I do have Trick Room, so the first question is, does my opponent anticipate my Trick Room? Because if so, I can reverse Trick Room. But the downside here is Snorlax, I think, most certainly goes for a Belly Drum. Hmm. There are two plays my opponent can make here. If Snorlax is Belly Drum, you Belly Drum and Trick Room. Or, or you can protect Snorlax in Trick Room. 
It could also be Z Mimikyu. So, this is really scary, to be honest. Like, I'm inclined to just go for the Trick Room Turn 1 with Gardevoir, because I'm not sure my opponent will anticipate that. So, I'm going to Mega Evolve. Or maybe I don't need to Mega... Eh, I should for the bulk, yeah. I'm going to Mega Evolve. Man, I haven't played with Megas in so long, it's so odd. And I could U-Turn or just Rock Slide. If I Rock Slide, I face flinching myself, so I might just Super Power Snorlax, see if I can get it off. Because that will do a lot of damage. So, no Switch Outs here. Yeah, I considered rock slide, rock sliding, rock sliding because it would break Mimikyu's. Uh, oh wow, that's kind of laggy. It would break Mimikyu's disguise, but if I flinch, that'd be really bad. Okay, no protect here, which is good. So ideally, Snorlax Trick Rooms here. Wow, that almost just knocks it out. That was so close. I, sorry, ideally Mimikyu Trick Rooms here. I'm just so excited. I'm mixing up all my words. Mimikyu Trick Rooms here and Snorlax Belly Drums because that would be so perfect for me. Okay, nice. Snorlax Belly Drums, which certainly means that your Trick Room is going to be coming out right now. Uh, however, the downside here is if Snorlax does have Protect, because we didn't get the Knockout. Um, but that's a pretty good turn for me. That's like the perfect, ideal turn, honestly. The only downside is now I am locked into Super Power. And now we have some Trick Room Mind Games, right? Does my opponent anticipate me to go for a Trick Room again? I think I'm just going to attack with Gardevoir this turn, and switch out into Aegislash. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to Hyper Voice, and... Ah, uh, do I think Snorlax has Protect? I would run Protect, but you typically want, like, Recycle, Belly Drum, Facade, Slash Return, and, um, and Recycle. Did I say Recycle? Recycle, Belly Drum. Uh, you do want High Horsepower as well. So that's the thing. If my opponent has Protect, that means he probably doesn't have High Horsepower, which means that Aegis Slash just wall Snorlax. So I feel pretty safe just switching out here. Yeah, that turn one worked out phenomenally, but I'm still not in the clear. Like, right now, Snor if I can knock out Snorlax, then I'll feel really good. Uh, just because that's the biggest threat. No Protect comes out, which is perfect. Okay, that's so good. Uh, man, it's so nice using Mega Gardevoir again. I love Mega Gardevoir. Uh, and this, I love, like, this is just so fun because it takes me back to VGC 15. I know a lot of you guys, like, found out about my channel back during 15, so uh, it's a good throwback. And, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so good. Mimikyu goes for a psych up too. Uh, yeah, like, I like the risk that my opponent took there, but it is actually really risky because, like, my play here is to, like, either stay in with Landers and just superpower the Snorlax and Trick Room myself again. Like, there are very little situations where Mimikyu successfully gets psych up, right? Because, like, I'm either gonna just try to target down Snorlax. Like, my play there is to either Trick Room uh, with Gardevoir or Hyper Voice and switch out, like, the play I did, or just stay in and superpower uh, Snorlax and Trick Room. So, the Psych Up is really risky because you're basically hoping that the Snorlax doesn't go down that turn and you're hoping I Trick Room. So the only way that works is if I switch out Landorus and I Trick Room with Gardevoir, but that's a pretty risky play on my end. So, I like what my opponent was going for there, it doesn't really quite work out. And now we have the Camerupt coming in. Camerupt coming in is okay, I'm not too worried about that. I think I'm just going to go straight for a Psychic onto Camerupt and a Shadow Ball. Onto Mimikyu. I feel really good about my position right now. Uh, Mimikyu is intimidated too, so I shouldn't be able to do too much. Uh, Camera Up also doesn't Mega Evolve, which is interesting. Uh, Psychic actually crits and almost gets the knockout. Mimikyu actually opts not to Trick Room either, so that's pretty much game, I think. Um, Camera Up might get the double knockout here, but my Aegis Slash is obviously faster, so I should be able to knock out Mimikyu. Even if not, it'll bring it down to Presume Focus Slash. And then I'll have Landers and Feeny in the back to close out this game. So, yeah, basically having Trick Room on this Gardevoir saved me. If I didn't, I'd probably actually just lose the game because Snorlax just sweeps through my team. Uh, and we'll see Camera probably go for... <laughs> it goes for an Eruption. Uh, I feel kind of bad. Yeah, I feel like... Eruption is just kind of questionable there. Like, the last two turns... Turn one on my opponent's end made sense. The last two turns, I feel like my opponent could have probably made some more optimal plays. Uh, especially bringing in Camera Up instead of Porygon. I feel like if you bring in Porygon, at least you threaten setting up Trick Room once again. Although I suppose I could just, uh, Trick Room with my Gardevoir and Shadow Ball the Mimikyu. But I think my opponent's, like, my opponent, even though the beginning of the game looked pretty bad, like, still had a chance of winning this one by trying to sweep with the Camera Up. And the way you do that is you position yourself where you threaten Trick Room and you, you basically force me to play the mind games of whether I Trick Room with Gardevoir and whether I call your Trick Room correctly with Porygon. And so, you know... I probably would have Shadow Ball Mimikyu and just Psychic the Porygon, so if Porygon did call it correctly in Trick Room, then you'd have Camera Up under full HP uh, with Trick Room. Although I think this Aegis Slash might have Wide Guard, I should check that. Although I suppose it's still not necessarily over right now. Um, I'm just going to Hyper Voice. And yeah, I don't have Wide Guard, so that actually makes this more interesting. Um, Hyper Voice, and I'll just Flash Cannon. 
Porygon. We'll see if Camera Up Trick Room or protects or not. Uh, my opponent actually just forfeits, so yeah. Going to have Anticlimatic for the first game. Turn 1, basically. I would say turn 2 won me the game. Uh, turn 1 was really good for me, uh, but turn 2 pretty much, like, put me in such an advantageous position where, like, my opponent didn't get anything off, and I was able to just really steamroll. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty content about that for the first game of this team and first game of the series. I think, um, you know, it's really tricky for my opponent. Like, that's why it's tough, uh, like... You know, when you look at team preview from my end, it's hard to say whether, like, Gardevoir is going to have Trick Room or not. And so, like, you can't blame my opponent for Trick Rooming turn one. Uh, I think turn two, though, my opponent definitely should have attempted to Trick Room again with Mimikyu uh, instead of going for a Psych Up. Uh, just because Psych Up didn't really allow you to get much off there. So, we do get a win for the first one, but this next one's going to be really fun. I actually wanted to use a Sand Team as well, uh, but the Sand Team that I saw the QR code had, like, Tailwind on Salamence, and I think... Tailwind is a tutor move, although I gotta say I think we will get that as a tutor move for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, but uh, yeah. I'm probably going to use the Sand team next, because for those that remember, I used Sand a lot back in VGC 15. I actually got top 4 at US Nationals that year with the Sand team, and it was just really fun, and now there's so many more options for Sand. But our opponent here has Charizard, Tyranitar, Tapu Koko, the... That's not a Tapu Fini, that's a Milotic, Excadrill, and Togetic. So Togetic, definitely the most interesting thing here. But Landorus is really good, other than the fact that there's a Milotic. Uh, because of Milotic, I can't really just lead Landorus, especially if that's Choice Scarf Milotic, just like VGC 15. Uh, so my opponent's team is actually very VGC 15-esque, other than the top of Coco. Huh, how do I want to approach this? I, I'm thinking Zapdos, and I believe this Incernor is Fake Out, right? I mean, it's got it. It's Assault Vest, so that's helpful. Yes, Fake Out. Snarl is interesting as well. I'm not really sure I want to use that too much. Um, like, the reason why is if I can get Tailwind up, Zapdos Landorus puts in a lot of work. But setting up Tailwind might be rather difficult just a little bit easier if I go Incineroar Zapdos. I think I'm going to go Incineroar Zapdos just to set up Tailwind. Well, Anders is still quite good offensively here. I'm a little bit more iffy on Mega Gardevoir. Um, I'll bring it. I ran out of time there. I'm actually not too sure about the Gardevoir call. I think Feeny, Aegislash are both relatively good here, but Gardevoir at least puts in some more pressure under Trick Room. Tailwind. <laughs> yeah, I, it's been a while since I've uh, played in general. Like, Vancouver Regionals was my last last time I played Pokemon at all. Um, before that, it was quite a while as well. So getting back into the swing of things, that's why, uh, you know, my words are all over the place. I'm pretty excited, but it is really fun just to be playing uh, a completely new format. This one's definitely exciting too. All right, my Lodic Togetic. I will take this because of the AV um, on the Incineroar. So I, could, I mean, what's stopping me from just fake outing and tailwinding? Like, I, I don't really see much counterplay from my opponent. I could figure out my Lodic in Tailwind, then we would just trade Tailwinds. That could work as well, instead of taking a Scald. Do I want to trade Tailwinds? Eh, trading Tailwinds actually might not be too bad. Yeah. Because I should be faster, and Zapdos puts on a lot of pressure right now. It's just a darn shame that my Lodic is competitive, because I can't just snarl away. But I like this lead from my opponent's end. Uh, my Lodic protects, actually. Okay, so... If I just faked out the Togetic like I wanted to, uh, I would be in a really good position. But I'm still going to be faster, so like this isn't too bad. Yeah, so the reason why I think this is a smart lead for my opponent was because like against Tyranitar... Oh, Reflect! That is really cool. Okay, I wasn't anticipating that, but that is really cool. Hmm. I'm kind of tempted to double up on Togetic now. Flare Blitz. Um... Do I think a Flare Blitz Thunderbolt will knock out Togetic? I'm not too sure. I kind of want a Z-Move. But saving Z-Move from my Lodic would be really nice. And Togetic could also just follow me here. Uh, you know what? I'm going to double up on Togetic. Because if I if my opponent doesn't get Tailwind up... Okay, that's fine. Yeah, so it would follow me because Tailwind doesn't go up. And I'm going to be faster for the next couple of turns. And I've got Gardevoir in the back. Uh, so I'm hoping Thunderbolt plus Flare Blitz knocks out Togetic. Ooh, that's going to be close. I don't think it will after... Yeah, it definitely won't after Reflect. But that means my opponent at least doesn't get Tailwind up, which is good. But wow, that's so bulky. Ooh, Icy Wind as well. Okay. Hmm. This is going to be an interesting game. Icy Wind, my Lodic is very scary. I don't mind not Z-moving because I do want to save it for the Milotic. And even at minus 2 speed, I should outspeed my Lodic. I suppose I'll just Dark... Lariat, whatever that's called, and just Thunderbolt into Togetic. Togetic could protect again, but I don't know if it does have protect. 
yeah, it just follows me. Okay, so this is fine. Uh, I'll get the knockout onto Togetic. I'll get some damage onto my Lodic enough where Thunderbolt might knock it out, but Z move definitely will knock it out. Um, and AV and Cinevor should easily take a Skull. I can't get burned either, which is good. So, like, not the worst start, but I do wish. I was so close to just fake outing the Togetic turn one. I'm not sure how much of a difference that actually makes because, you know, Mega Gardevoir in the back is special too. But, jeez, you can see how tanky these Pokemon are as another Icy Wind comes out. So, Icy Wind is going to be annoying, obviously, because once Tailwind expires, that's pretty bad for me. But the thing is, I still threaten with a knock it onto my Lodic immediately with the Z move. The only downside is, we know my Lodic is Protect right now. So my opponent could switch into Pokemon like Tyranitar or Excadrill that threatens a one-hit knockout onto Zapdos, and just protect my Lodic while knocking out Zapdos. So this next turn is going to be tricky. Uh, my Lodic is quite a nuisance to my team, since I don't have great damage output against it. It's mainly Zapdos and Gardevoir that can deal damage against it. And if my Lodic has Recover, that makes it even more difficult. So... Decent start to the game, but I'm still not really in the clear yet. Like, I would say I have, you know, more momentum since I've got Tailwind, but hard to say whether I have control of the game or not, depending on who my opponent is in the back. We could see Charizard come out. Uh, I'd be fine with Charizard, actually. Uh, there was a Tapu Koko that also doesn't threaten me too much, although it means it would mean my opponent would outspeed me. Like, the Icy Wind is tricky because it means uh, speed control is more difficult, and, you know, like... Had I not been Icy Winded, or had my Lodic not at Icy Wind, I could guarantee outspeeding everything. Here's Tyranitar coming in, which is probably the worst case scenario for me. And this is the last turn of Tailwind, I believe. So here's what I'm going to do. I think I'm actually going to just Z-move into my Lodic and switch out. Ah, the only downside here is if it's Scarf Tyranitar, because that'll outspeed Zapdos. There's actually a very decent chance it's Scarf Tar. Mm, but if it's Scarf Tar, and I switch into Landorus, a Rock Slide shouldn't knock me out. So I think this covers for all my options, because then Landorus will be the fastest Pokemon after this turn. So I'm going to Gigavolt Havoc into my Lodic, which covers the option of my Lodic protecting. I'm going to switch in Landorus, and that seems kind of risky when my Lodic has competitive, but I think... Um, like, the only downside is if my opponent has is Scarf Tar and uh, Stone Edge knocks me out, or Rock Slide flinches. So it has to be Scarf Tar, first of all. Um, and given that my Lodic... Yeah, I got affected by Intimidate first. Let's see. Nice. Unless my Lodic is faster here. Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay, great. Yeah, so we do see the Double Protect here. Um, and the Z-move here will do free damage. But more importantly, now I've just got Scarf Tar. Or, sorry, Landorus, which can just Earthquake. So I pivoted myself into a pretty good position, I would say. I'm pretty content about this. This probably won't knock out, but the, the real question is, what berry does, like, does the Milotic have a berry? If it's, like, one of the 50% berries, that's going to make things a little bit trickier. Um, but I can still just Earthquake. Let's see if this, yeah, it's not going to knock out. Okay, it, is this Citrus? It's not Citrus either. Oh, it's Moranga. Oh, that's so good for me. I'm pretty sure Choice Band Earthquake should just knock out Milotic from this range, and Lander should definitely be faster. So Tailwind Peter's out, but I'm pretty sure now I can just Earthquake. And go for another Tailwind. The good thing is my opponent brought out Tyranitar without Excadrill being out. So Tail, I mean, uh, Sand is getting stalled out slowly as well. So even if there's that Excadrill in the late game, with Landorus pressuring Intimidate, with Fake Out from Incineroar, uh, I can slowly stall out the Sand and then guarantee that I outspeed it. Um, although I suppose uh, an Excadrill could still sweep my team right now. So I made the play assuming Landorus is faster than my Lodic, like I'm fairly confident it will be, and it's banded. Yeah, it is. Okay, so that's really good for me. I uh, should get the knockout onto my Lodic. Band EQ might just knock out Tyranitar as well. We'll see. Whoa, wow, that's bad. Both of them hung on. Wow, I thought that definitely would get the knockout. Huh, that is not good. Alright, that just made this a lot more difficult. I mean, this is going to be really interesting now because I've got... Whoa, Landorus hung on? What the heck? Wow, I did not think Landers would hang on. That's actually huge. Oh, Reflect! I'm so st <laughs> That was my bad. I totally forgot about Reflect. Um, that's fine, though, because this is a free opportunity to just switch in Mega Gardevoir. And like Landers hanging on, like, is so huge for me because, like, I feel like I pretty much have the game won now because Landers hung on. Because uh, now I can pressure the... Potential Excadrill in the back with Intimidate, and all I need is one Intimidate to really win this. Even if it didn't hang on, I'd still feel potentially okay about my position, because I could uh, pressure with Trick Room, but now I just switch into Incineroar, Mega Evolve, and Hyper Voice. 
But that was a pretty bad blunder on my end. Uh, I totally forgot about... I was I was like, wow, how did they both hang on? And uh, obviously without the Reflect, Earthquake definitely gets a knockout on both there, which was what I was saying. Uh, but I forgot about the Reflect, which is a pretty bad blunder on my end. So I'm going to bring in Incineroar because I want to conserve the Intimidate on Landers' end, and now I Hyper Voice. And the nice thing is, too, now depending on who my opponent's last Pokemon is, if it's speedy, I can just fake out Trick Room the following turn. We probably see a Protect here. We do see it from the Tyranitar, which is definitely the most ideal play. I think you probably sacked the Milotic here for my opponent, and it looks like that's what my opponent's going for. So, yeah, that was a crazy series of events. I thought, you know, certainly Icy Wind picks up the knockout plus two special attack, but I suppose, you know, Icy Wind is rather weak. So, uh, I need to check my sand turns here, because that's slowly getting stalled out as well. But the thing is, now regardless of whatever comes in, I can just fake out the slot next to Tyranitar and just Hyper Voice again. So for my opponent to really stay in this game, uh, perhaps needs a double protect, and even with the double protect, I still like my position. It is the Excadrill in the back, which I thought it might be. Uh, two turns of Sandstorm left, which bodes really well for me. So I'm going to fake out into Excadrill, and just Hyper Voice. Yeah. So that's why, like I said, Landorus hanging on means that I feel really confident about this game. But I did, like, that was that was a pretty bad mistake on my end. Um, I, I After the game, I'll kind of think about what I would have done instead. Uh, but here I just get the clean knockout onto Tyranitar, Excadrill does not opt to go for Protect either. So, Sand's gonna expire after this turn. I believe I'm fast enough, like... I actually, uh, don't know the exact speed tiers right now, which is kind of bad on my end, but I think I'm just gonna switch out until... I mean, Lander should outspeed Excadrill once Sand's gone, right? Yeah, my opponent EQs right now, probably. You know, I'll switch into Landris. Yeah, I like that. And just go for a Psychic into Excadrill. Actually, Trick Room might have been better, because then Incineroar just guarantees knocks out. Yeah, Incineroar, uh, that would have been better. Trick Room definitely would have been better. So, definitely made some mistakes this game. But the, my team is keeping me afloat, fortunately. Uh, we do just see a Rock Slide. <laughs> Landris actually avoids it, which is unfortunate. Uh, I mean, I'll take that, right? Like, Rock Slide would knock out Landris. I'd be, be able to bring the Incineroar back in and just fake out Trick Room and win anyway. So, the miss there doesn't really matter. Uh, but the survival early game was just uh, really, really fortunate on my end. I, I'm not sure if I honestly needed it 100%, but it made the game just easier to play around. Uh, so Togetic was pretty cool on my opponent's end, honestly. Um, I'm just yeah. So Extra Drill actually is faster than Lander still outside of Sand. So that's like always an interesting point. You know how fast do you want your Extra Drill to be? Because you could run like bulky. Um, yeah, I should have tripped from there again, but I, I don't think my opponent has any way of winning this at this point. Yeah. So, like, even if I didn't Trick Room there, I just bring in Center or Fake Out Trick Room anyway. Uh, Rocks, I would have, even if it crit flinches, yeah, my opponent doesn't have any way to really get out of that. So, yeah, that's a pretty fun episode for the first one today, definitely. Like, game one went by pretty quickly because I made decent calls the first two turns and I got pretty fortunate about that. Uh, game two definitely was pretty, like, a lot closer, I think. And I got fortunate that, one, it wasn't Scarf Tower, and two, that Landers hung on. Uh, you know, the combination of that made it so that I was in a really good position. I was surprised my opponent's Togedic didn't try to Tailwind at any point because I feel like Tailwind would have been really helpful, uh, especially with Icy Wind because then you actually outspeed everything with Tailwind and Scarf Tar, or sorry, not Scarf Tar, regular Tyranitar. So that was kind of surprising. Uh, the lack of Mega Evolutions also has been surprising. Like, not, now that I think about it, Tyranitar could have been a Mega Tyranitar, but chose not to Mega Evolve, which is also interesting. So we do get two wins to kick off this series, but I had a lot of fun and hopefully you guys did as well. Uh, you know, I'm sure we're going to run into a lot of cool teams as we play along this for the next month or so. And the, the reason why I'm doing this once again is because like it's the closest thing we have to VGC 18. Uh, once Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon actually come out, I'm sure within a week people will have teams. And so we'll be switching back to uh, Road to Ranked and I'll be doing that series on Road to Rank. But for now, I'm going to do this alongside Road to Rank just because I still might want to make some VGC 17 videos, but I also want to try this. So thank you for watching the very first episode of Battle Spot Trouble. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, leave a like if you did. Give me any feedback. Let me know what you want to see. You can check out this team and try it out yourself uh, with the QR code linked in the description below. And it is good to be back finally. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. All right, peace.